Good afternoon and welcome to Real Talk with Tamara. As you guys come into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I hope that you guys are doing okay on today. I know that I am, child. But I wanted to um, get on here and talk about uh, Billy Ray Turner, Lorenz and Wright's um, accused killer. Of course, he was convicted. And if you all know, I covered that case um, on my TV show for many years. I interviewed his mother and things of that nature. And I'm going to insert some video in here if I get the opportunity uh, to do that. And so I took a I took an interest in Lorenz and Wright's case. Uh, Lorenz and Wright was a, a Memphis, um, a hometown star, you know, um, that was very given, um, did a lot. Um, I think in the beginning, especially when he was at the University of Memphis, uh, he was given his credit and he should have been. And then when he went to the NBA, he was drafted by the Grizzlies and he was the star of the Grizzlies, but then he was traded and after that, I think he kind of got lost in the sauce, although he was a great player. You know, he was very good looking, okay? Tall, handsome, gorgeous, okay? Um, and, um, you know, just in speaking with Lorenz's mother, she went into, if people look at my show, she always said, even before his murder went on saw for seven years, um, she always felt like his ex-wife had killed him for money, right? And I kind of knew the backstory of that, you know, um, Lorenz and Wright's wife, his mother would go into detail. And because we was putting it on TV, child, um, we had it was a lot that we had to edit out for legal reasons because um, she was just flat out blunt. And she wanted for Shara to know um, that um, that she knew that she had killed her son. So during one of my interviews with Lorenz's mother, uh, Lorenz's mother spoke about uh, his child, his and Shara's child, Sierra, uh, that died um, years ago. Of course, we saw it on TV. Um, Lorenz seemed to be extremely devastated, and so did Shara. But Lorenz's mother finally broke her silence and had some very interesting things to say about that situation. A, a baby that died. Mm -hmm. Now, how was that for him? Oh, that was the worst thing could have ever happened to my child. Mm -hmm. His baby died. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I, I let him die without telling him what that doctor told me. That doctor told me that because Cheryl and her cousin kept saying they had just checked on the baby. And the doctor came out of the room and he said, oh, where is this child's parents? Cheryl was in the room by herself, and I was in the hall. Lisa, her wife was in the hall, and her stepmom was in the hall. And I'm like, these are, you know, step grandmother. I'm the only biological grandmother here. So he's can I talk with you? He took me outside. This is what that doctor told me. But the only thing I told Granny was, you need to go talk to this little short, fat doctor in that emergency room and tell him I sent you to him. But I never told on reason what that doctor said. This is what the doctor told me. He asked me what my name was, and I told him. It's all right, Miss Barry. No one just checked on that baby. That baby had it expired a few hours ago. Oh, wow. Now, that's what the doctor told me. Mm -hmm. And I never did go into that with my son. I told him, you need to go talk to this little short, fat doctor in the emergency room. Oh, boy, at the hospital, what's the hell about it? Mm -hmm. Is that what he told me? Mm -hmm. He said, no one had just checked on that baby. Mm -hmm. But that baby had been expired two to three hours ago. And sure, I mean, then reason the reason he told me probably because until you hear them say we just checked on her, crying, we just checked. They were trying to convince themselves that they just checked on, but they didn't. Oh, wow. The mother stated when Sierra, their daughter, that uh, that uh, it was ruled a seed's death. Um, when she died, unfortunately, she was about nine or, or she may have been a year old. OK, um, I forget exactly how old she was, but she was still a baby. She was about a little bit over a year, I do believe. Um, she said that Lorenzen was in the process of leaving uh, Shara at that point. 
And she says that is when, when that happened, he went back to Shara. He sank into a depression because he loved his children and went back to Shara. And I'm going to tell you what's so weird. One of my friends that owns a bonding company, he had sponsored a lot of those shows. And what was so weird was Lorenz and Wright's mom had told, said to me that Shara had one of the kids to call, one of her grandkids to call and say, you know, grandma, you know, I'm tired of, and this was back when Lorenzo was first killed, you know, I'm tired of, um, you know, uh, seeing stories about my dad. I'm tired of seeing interviews. And Lorenzo's mother has always been very blunt. And I remember she said, she told him, okay, well, if you don't want to hear me talk about your daddy and try to uh, keep your daddy's case alive, y'all change the channel. But she said she knew that Shara had put them up to do that because Shara did not want her. She was relentless. Okay. She was very adamant and deliberate. Okay. Um, um, on national platforms, um, she would hint at it because she couldn't outright say it but on my tv show she would just outright say she killed my son for money okay and we would have to edit that out and what's so weird is the guy that was sponsoring that show that that show for me um one of my sponsors was one of my friends over at the bonding company and what was so weird he said that shara had actually came to the bonding company because she was looking at the shows she saw that he was sponsoring the shows and she came over to the bonding company and actually tried to woo him, right? Told him she wanted a job and she wanted him to train her. Now, this is a lady that had got all Lorenz's money, was getting his $11,000 pension a month and went over to the same damn bonding company that was sponsoring my show, especially that show, particular show, and tried to get a job. Um, she ended up marrying a police officer and... Um, um, evidence and stuff went missing, okay, in the evidence room. It's a lot of stuff, which is the reason why that the Lorenz and Rice case is one of the reasons why they revamped the whole evidence room. Like, it is it is very secure. Officers used to could walk in and certain people and, and go and get stuff. And now it is, it is way more um, isolated and secure. Um, that case right there because of stuff that was going missing is one of the very reasons why, um, that that happened. Okay. Um, but you know, of course, then, you know, seven years later, Shara Wright was arrested. Y'all saw her, you know, Lorenzo Wright says that Shara would always make his Lorenzo Wright's mother said that Shara would always make jokes when Lorenzo Wright was alive, you know, when he would joke about leaving her or whatever, she would say, oh, he ain't gonna leave me. He worked more dead than alive. And she said, she finally told her one time, don't, don't, don't say that. I, you know, I really wish you wouldn't make those jokes about my child. You know, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know that went on with Shara, right? Like, um, they said that Shara allegedly had family members that was petrified of her, because um, allegedly something happened to her as it relates to her uncle, okay, um, when she was younger. And then that uncle came up dead, okay? So she had a family member that would confide in Lorenz's mother and tell her some things about how so twisted Shara really was. Um, but she was really petrified, you know, of her. Um, some, some people, uh, I know that the uncle, they believe that she allegedly killed. Okay. And, you know, allegedly there was some twisted things going on in her family as it relates to her father. And I have to say allegedly, because this is what was told to me. And I'm not saying who told me, but it, it was told to me by a credible source that um, somebody very close to the father, and since this lady, uh, uh, this person was so petrified of her, um, I won't say who it was. They felt that it was very strange for allegedly Cheryl and her father to be sleeping in a bed together, okay? Uh, especially as she became an adult. So 
you know, um, I, I just, I, I think Cheryl was traumatized to the point where she was just very sadistic. Um, I mean, really twisted. Okay. And I was, this is allegedly, okay. Um, but there are people that know that swear to it. Okay. But, you know, um, I, their relationship had been rocky. You know, they said that Shara had, um, she blamed Lorenzen for losing her, her good looks. You know, she had been a nice looking woman at one time, but see Shara, I'm told that Shara was about seven years older than Lorenzo. Now that's what I'm told. If I'm wrong, y'all correct me. Cause I think what's what, what they have, what, what I, I'm going to look up her age. Okay. But I was told she was about seven years older than him because when she got with him, he was 15 years old and her mother, his mother talked about that on my show. Okay. And allegedly what had happened was, um, you know, a family member of hers was putting her on um, star players, right? You know, Penny, um, I believe Todd Day, you know, but I think Penny and Todd Day and them were old enough to know better. You know, NBA players get a lot of women, okay? So um, they, they got a lot of money. So they tend to keep a lot of women around them. So I don't think they... You know, I think they was old enough to know better, but I think what ended up happening was they put her on Lorenzen when he was in um, high school, about the 10th grade, 15 years old, 14 or 15. And and this was told to me by her, his mother, as far as this part, um, she was already an adult. OK, and Lorenzen Wright had not had no girlfriend. So can you imagine a young lady that had been out there that had had all types of experience, a young boy, you know, that had not had them experiences. Of course, it more than likely blew his mind, but his mother even spoke about that in the show. She said she didn't know that this was going on because in order for Shara's father to, I believe he was coaching him or something, he was living with her mother and her mother thought that Shara was his age, right? But when she got wind of it, she knew, that uh, she wasn't or whatever, but hell, by that time it was too late. So there is a, a lot of um, um, backstory to that. Thing about it is, I became very close to his family um, when this was going on. His mother always would come over to my studio and do an interview. Child, me and his sister is very tight. I mean, it's it just you know, I, I thank God that they was able to trust me because a lot of the things now, the things that I'm talking about. She had already put into the atmosphere. There are a lot of other things that, and I think that's one of the reasons why she would come over to do the show, okay, that she told me about that I'll never repeat because she said it was off record, okay? I ain't no, no two-faced person, okay? So, um, you know, she may speak about it, but I never will, right? But there was a lot of stuff that went on, and I can remember when this situation happened with Lorenz and um, we heard just a, a snippet of the 911 tape, just a snippet, you know, that they put out to the public. And his mother said she was never able to listen to it. But um, I remember one of the investigators, I was sitting outside child, um, on break. And I remember one of the um, district attorney's uh, investigators came out and we started talking and he was telling me and he could be heard saying um oh man can we can we talk about this okay um that that kind of had let them know from the very beginning that it was somebody that they knew but his mother always said because he was shot in the face right that it was somebody um shooting somebody in the face that many times that's anger that's personal and um, she always said that she felt like that it was Shara uh, that did that. Because, you know, Lorenzo was a very handsome young man. It could have been Billy Ray Uglass, mad because he's short and ugly, okay? Um, I always felt like, you know, there were other people out there. And now Billy Ray, I, I said all that to say this. But let me just say this. When Lorenzo Wright was found, they already knew that it was not a robbery because people were trying to say it was a robbery gone wrong. And his mom said his body 
um, you know, my friend, uh, Green, at the time, he was the police major, he was the major over out there at the uh, precinct in that area. And they actually made that scene. And I remember Lorenzo's mother saying that he was only like 80 pounds or 60 pounds when they found him. And so I asked him, I said, well, well, what did he look like? He said it, he was just bones. There was he he was they the animals had completely eaten his flesh up because, you know, he was out there for about two weeks. And it was one of the hottest summers in Memphis. And he said he knew that it wasn't a robbery because he still had all of that jewelry, thousands, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. Uh, he had like a six, seven thousand dollar bracelet still on what was left of him on his arm. Um, and he had about, I believe they said thirteen thousand dollars or something like that. Uh, he had several thousand dollars. I, it, it was way over five thousand. I can't remember exactly. I believe it was like thirteen thousand or ten thousand or something like that that was still in his pants pocket. So when his ex-wife was trying to say that it was a drug deal gone bad, it was a robbery. No, nah, they wouldn't have left all that jewelry on him, and he had thousands of dollars worth of jewelry on him, and he had that money still in his pocket, right? So his mother always knew. Um, the way that she moved, people always knew. And then she went and wrote a book, okay, basically uh, telling everything. What's so weird is that Billy Ray was somebody that Lorenzen actually gave an opportunity and hired uh, to be his yard man, right? Um, and I guess from that, you know, when he separated from Cheryl, she, he was still cutting Cheryl's yard or whatever. And um, hey, um, that's, that's when the alleged affair started. Right. And so, you know, I think that is sad because I, you know, a lot of people that was close to Lorenz and said that they wished that because she had actually sent them months prior to take him out and he was overseas. Right. And one of the reasons that she had an urgency for them to take him out when they did is because she had had an argument with Lorenz OK, according to um, his family and Lorenzen has said to her, um, I have an appointment to change my will. OK, I'm meeting with my attorney. He was going to take her name off of everything and he was going to try and get custody of his kids. Well, that would mean, you know, no more child support for her, even though she said he wasn't paying her the 27000 He was not making the money that he had once made, but he was still sending her plenty of money. She was living good. Okay. And, um, you know, um, but once he told her that and put that into the atmosphere, that is why she really had the urgency to go on and take him out. Okay. Um, he had started to move on with another young lady. She played in the WNBA. I believe it said her name was Tina Thompson. And she had started to, he was uh, getting ready to get a contract overseas. And his mother was saying how Tina was helping him to rebuild his wealth. Cause he had basically, uh, when I, I asked her, I said, was he like poor like us? Y'all know we the poor folks poor. She was like, no, nah, he was like the rich folks poor. You know what I mean? The wealthy people poor. He didn't have all that money that he had had because he had, he was real given. Shara had ran through a whole lot of it. And, um, and so he, it just, it kind of went through his fingers, but he was in the process of rebuilding. He was going to get his children because of the lifestyle that Shara was living and he was getting ready to change his wheel. Now this is according to his family. So if don't come into my chat talking about that ain't what happened. I, I believe what his family say, not you. Okay. Um, and so, you know, it, it's just a lot of stuff behind that. So now, you know, they went to trial, child, her cousin, uh, turned state's evidence child and put it all on Sharon and Billy Ray. And I do believe that he was out there. Okay. And I'm gonna tell y'all something they say, and this is just in my opinion, cause you know, Billy Ray said that there were more people out there. Let me tell you something. And I'm not being accusatory, but I just gotta be honest. Okay. When I heard those shots, the way that those shots were going off, okay, and we only got a snippet of it because they shot him up 
a lot of times. Just the way that they first started going off, I was sure that it was somebody um, out there that um, that served on some in the service or on some police department or something. Okay, because of the way that um, the shots were going off. When I was in the academy, that was a particular way that we had to fire. It was a uniform way. Pow, 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 pow. I mean, it just it. I don't know. I, I always thought that. And so when uh, Billy Ray child, he done broke his silence. Y'all know he was he was he was convicted. OK. And he done got life in prison. Now, all of a sudden he want to break his silence. But see, what happened was Billy Ray got to be the damnedest fool I ever seen. OK, because um, Cheryl made an ass out of him all the way across the board. OK. All the way to the very end, uh, Cheryl was able to make a damn fool out of him. She never married him like she said she was going to do. And uh, she left him. He was a deacon in the church. Okay. They both went and joined the church. Don't get me started on that. They made them ministers because they was putting big money in the church. Okay. Even Cheryl. Okay. And um, you had the pastor on TV, uh, trying to take up for them when they was arrested. That's because they was putting big money in the church. Okay. Um, but, but, but Billy Ray is wanting to, uh, you know, he wants to break his silence. He's saying that he was, um, railroaded, but see, Cheryl made a fool out of him. That's what I was getting ready to say. Cheryl had said to him, I was told that Cheryl had said to him, that they were not going to take the deal because it was they knew that Cheryl was the mastermind and had a whole lot to gain. She got the million dollars from the um she got the million dollars from the um from the NBA pension. Okay. Lorenzen was able to retire so she got his retirement okay which was eleven thousand dollars a month. Anybody can live off eleven G's a month. And she also had her own personal insurance on him. And he also had other insurance policies. So she was banking. Okay. And he had a house in his, he had bought his mother a house and the house was in his name. And Cheryl took the house. Okay. Now, okay. He had property, a uh, vacation property in Arkansas. And she took that and sold it too. OK, so she just and spent every nickel. And I think Cheryl went through that money like that because she knew at some point her day was going to come. and She wanted to make sure there was nothing left. So his mother and them who really and his kid, even his kids could not. She didn't even think about her children. She had minor kids. OK. So anyways, oh, 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 Billy Ray. I was getting ready to call him something else. But God got my tongue, caught my tongue up. Because I was sure get ready to call him something, okay? He goes on News Channel 3. He breaking, He's breaking his silence. He says that he was railroad, railroaded. I don't know if I got the opportunity to say, Shara, it was Billy Ray that they really wanted to give the deal to in the beginning. Well, once they was called, you know, Shara put that whip appeal on him again. Said that they were not going, they were going to stick together. They weren't going to talk. Okay, and guess what happened? Billy Ray played hardball and Sherry got the damn deal. But he the damnedest fool that they ever was that walked the earth. Now he want to see this little short ugly ass up on News Channel 3 and think somebody going to believe him. Yeah, I believe it was more folks out there, but he had his ass out there too, okay? But let's let's uh, go on and look at what he got to say, okay? Now, child, it's going to be interesting to hear what Billy Ray has to say, but I just get the feeling that it's smoking mirrors. Of course, I do believe that there were other people out there uh, to include Shara's cousin who ended up telling on Shara. OK, he ended up telling, I believe, because he was smart enough to know that they was getting close and Shara didn't give him what she promised to give him. So, hey, you know, he had them to make a promise that he could not be charged. Right. As long as he told the truth, he got them the goods and. Hey, he has immunity, although he's already in jail serving for a murder. I do remember his name coming up and people saying that they believe that he was involved even before all of this happened. So 
I mean, I don't feel bad for Billy Ray, okay? Billy Ray should have took the deal and told the truth. Instead, he let uh, Cheryl play him yet again, okay? So now he wants to talk after Judge Coffey has thrown the book at him, okay? That's what Judge Coffey does. Nobody likes being in Judge Coffey's courtroom because he throws the book at you, okay? So um, this is interesting, okay? Um, I know I went through, I just had to give a recap of everything because I was just very dedicated to that story and very dedicated to helping Lorenz and Wright's family and keeping that story out there. And all of this is interesting. And y'all, believe it or not, with all this out, it's so much more that people don't know about. It's so much more. Billy Ray, listening to him, he seems a little slow, but Billy Ray was a hit man, okay? He was a hitman by by night, I'm told, okay? This was not the first time, I'm told, um, that something like this uh, had happened with Billy Ray. Because understand now, there were other people that had information about this case. And I'm told that they was threatened and scared off. Uh, strange things started to happen to him. And I'm hearing that Billy Ray was mixed up in that. So Shara consistently had him uh, doing stuff. And then what would she do? She'd go marry somebody else. And with her betraying him so much, you would think that when they offered him the deal, of course, y'all heard April ask him that. I talked about it before she even said it. Um, you know, why didn't you take the deal? He told some type of lie. But, you know, because, you know, I, I wanted to go to trial. No, he thought that Cheryl Wright had his back. If we don't say nothing, we're going to get off. But even if you don't say nothing and the folks got the evidence, you ain't getting off. Okay? You're not getting off. After Lorenzen gave him an opportunity, Lorenzen leaves uh, Shara. They divorce. Lorenzen moves to Atlanta. He stays around cutting the grass or whatever, starts sleeping with Shara. Because she already had an idea of what she wanted. She saw that he was sick-minded. He was weak. And he was already tied up in, in doing, you know, crazy stuff. And um, she had him to kill her husband, okay? She, her ex-husband. He was her ex-husband at that point, you know? But like I said, he's got a three-part interview, child. It don't mean nothing. Billy Ray going to keep his ass in jail where he needs to be because uh, Billy Ray, just like Shara, is very dangerous. Now, I think Shara got 30 years. She would have got just as many years as Billy Ray, but she tricked him and not, into not taking the deal, and she took it because that's who they wanted. She was the mastermind, okay? And she got the 30 years, and he going to die in jail. Ain't that something? Uh, and she probably will too, cause Shara's probably, she might be 50. She might be 80 if she lived to get out. She looking real bad these days. Okay. Child, she, they say she wanted to blame Lorenz and Wright because she had developed Bell's palsy. Y'all see her mouth had twisted all the way around to the back of her damn head. And she felt like that had something to do with Lorenz and stressing her out. And they said, she said, he stressed me out and got me looking this way now he going he think he going to go on with his life and rebuild his life with somebody else she had been sleeping around allegedly with everybody he called her with her cousin her mama his cousin his mama talked about that on my TV show okay so it's a lot of stuff that 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 went on uh that was talked about outside of the TV show that lady was straight ready okay um, so hopefully I feel like as long as she's got breath in her body, even if she get out, if she, when she's 80 something years old, that lady is dangerous. Okay. You can't, you can't cure crazy. And that is pure D crazy. Okay. But anyways, you guys, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're going to keep a uh, close watch on this, but I want you guys to please like, share, and subscribe. If you would like to support the channel, you could definitely support the channel via cash app. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.